welcome everybody. Pat Dumont is our illustrious moderator. <coughs> Pat has been doing this for years. I said it's weird here just to be the audience. Yeah. And this is how we divide her who has just gracious. We're going to videotape this. It's going to be, um, I don't know how this happens, but it's going to be made into a YouTube link. And then we're going to send that link out to the community, which we have about 13, I think 1,350 or so um, email addresses for the community. And that's not the whole community. And sometimes it's a husband and wife in the same house. So it's not hitting every house, but it's the best we can do with what we have. And that's what we're going to do this year. And maybe it'll hit more people that way than normal, which is maybe about 65 to 75 people come to yeah. candidates night. So um, thank you all for coming. It is on your own that you're deciding to be here. You guys know that. I think Kat has a statement that she's going to read. Yeah. Um, we tried to keep it as COVID compliant as we can. We have nine people. If, if Craig shows up, we have nine people total. We are all distancing between six to eight feet where your seats are. We have sterilized. We have gloves. We have masks. We have everything you need if you want it. I think that's it. Okay. I'm going to do the... Um, you want to talk about the POA's position? You were going to talk about that. That this is a, a night, this is a, an event for you. The POA doesn't have a position um, about candidates tonight or candidates event, but we do want to make this room available because it's the best way that the residents can see how you respond to questions that are on their minds and then they can make their vote. Um, you'll see this when you just start your five minute introduction. You don't have to spend five minutes. Um, you'll see this one when you have 30 seconds left, and this is when you're going over, okay? So I want to talk about time. Um, as I said, we could be here for five hours. We have tons of questions. Let me stand up so you don't have to see the other hand. Um, five. We're going to deal with five people. Let's assume Craig is not coming. So five candidates each of you can talk for five minutes. Somebody do the math for me. I did it with six candidates. So then you have two minute wrap up, you know, two minutes times five candidates. I have about two minutes talk in the beginning. Uh, and then about a minute to read each question. So each question could have five answers, so all five of you could answer with one minute. That's you know, that's ten minutes just on one question. Not even reading it, just answering the questions. So we're going to ask you to keep your answers as concise as possible. One minute, we say one minute. Some cannot be answered in one minute. Some, some can be answered yes, no, that's it. So let's keep the answers as brief as possible. If you don't understand the question, we'll take a second and reread it. I can't um, pick it up. They're all over the place. There are all kinds of issues that are being she brought needs up. To use so the just, mic. Okay, you can't prepare for everything. When you're talking, you use the microphone so it's picked up on the audio. In your face, just like this, just like you're going to kiss it. So it's got to be horizontal or perpendicular to your face, not like this. You won't be here, you won't hear anything. That's it. Then you got to turn it off. Turn it off when you're not talking, otherwise, you're not that. Okay. So. Well, I'd like to pick a suggestion that we. We vote on how long this is going to last because I'm not going to sit here for four hours. No, no, it's an not hour, two hours. We need to. Well, I we need we to have some it, sort of. We put an absolute time limit of two hours on it. We're going to okay. we're going to try to make it okay. an hour and a half. But that's okay. fine. Okay. So uh, you, I, you just scared me with all those questions. No, we could be here till noon. We could be here no. till six o'clock, right. basically. Okay. No, we're not going to. I don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Nobody's going to listen to it for that long anyway. Nobody's ever going to listen to it. No, anyway. no. Yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of people do. A lot of people do. Um, okay, so Howard, when you're ready, are you tape videoing now? I've been doing it. Oh, well, I didn't want you to do all that stuff. It's <laughs> okay. okay. Um, That's why I wanted you to okay, use the this, mic. This was provided to me by DOA. Okay, I'm just, just going to read it. Use your um, use your microphone so they can Pat. Yes. You use the mic, but you can turn it down a little bit. I just want to make sure that the camera picks it up. I don't even know which mic is it. Is that better? Much better. Okay. All Thank right. You. Good morning, officially. 
Because we are all under COVID-19 restrictions, the POA cannot offer the property owners the use of the community center for candidates night as it has been in the past. In an effort to give the property owners a chance to ask questions and for the candidates to present themselves to the community, the POA has offered the use of the community center for this event today. Candidates all have the same and equal opportunity <coughs> to participate in this event or decline to do so. This is simply the alternative offered to replace candidates night that had to be canceled due to COVID-19 restrictions. The POA Board of Directors and Officers is neutral in all elections, does not promote, endorse, nor is responsible for the campaigns of any or all candidates. An update was sent to the community by the community manager, giving members an opportunity to submit questions by the, to the candidates by sending them to the POA office. And we have a stack of them. Today is Thursday, May 14, 2020. The candidates that have chosen to do so have come together in the community center, keeping within all COVID-19 restrictions. Each will be given the opportunity to introduce themselves, answer the pre-submitted questions, and give a brief closing. Today's event is being filmed, well, videotaped, and a link will be sent to the community by the community manager so property, manage, so property owners can view it. This event is held in the same format that candidate night has been held in the past with a moderator but with no live audience. The rules are the same as past candidates nights with the exception that the questions have been pre-submitted. There will be a random drawing to determine the order in which you will speak. We've already done that. Each candidate has a maximum of five minutes to present introductory remarks and qualifications. Jennifer will give you a 30 second warning. Questions from the members are in pre-submitted format, will be asked to the candidates by the moderator and please try to limit your answers to one minute. Every candidate will be given an opportunity to respond, so each of you can answer all the questions, if you choose. Each candidate will be given two minutes for your final remarks, and a 30-second warning will be given by time. In order of drawing, uh, let me introduce the candidates to the members who are looking at this. Position, hold your hand up. Jim Rosania. Position two, Rick Wolf. Position three, Jeff Paul. Position four, Debbie Lutz. And position six in the back, Irv Jaffe. Uh, and we're ready to go. Um, Jim, if you want to turn your microphone on and give us your introduction. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Jim Rosania. I've been in the community since uh, 2006. Uh, got a job that year at the golf course. Still working there. Um, was at the old course when it was open and when they closed, I moved over to the new one and held the various positions there. And I'm currently still working there with Dan and the rest of the gang. Um, this community has been great to me. And my wife has, was volunteered in many, many positions here. And I, I helped her with most of them with uh, road cleanup and Red Cross and uh, helpers. Harbor helpers taking people around to various appointments, and they were just super to me. And my wife got ill, and I just—they gave me so much. I just want to give something back, uh, and I think I have some talent that I can lend to the community and and help us reach whatever goals we decide we want to reach. Um, I don't know everything. There's a lot I can still learn, and I'm willing to do it. Um, that's about it. My background is uh, I've held, uh, I was with Mack Trucks for 22 years, and I was with my brothers in business for almost 20 years. So basically, I held two jobs. Um, Didn't take my own advice, sorry. <laughs> basically, I held two jobs, and um, we decided to move down here to Fairview Harbor because, it, mostly because of the weather and I liked golf too, so there were two golf courses here at the time. My wife went along with it. She had her horses and she got done with the horses and so it was up to me to do a golf. And um, I graduated from Rutgers uh, with a Bachelor of Science and majoring in accounting. Uh, so I know debits and credits and assets and liabilities and balance sheets and things like that because that was in my background. Uh, I started with Mack Trucks in the mailroom, worked my way up to supervisor, 
and then I went to my brother's. Uh, it was a brother, it was a private business with my brother's um, structural foam plastics, and I was the accounting manager there and uh, office manager. I worked with people. Um, I didn't know how to do a lot of things, so when they had a problem, they came to me and I said, well, I don't know how to do this, but maybe together we can figure it out. And we did, most of the time. Uh, how are we doing on time? So um, basically that's it. I just want to help the community and give something back. Um, that's the bottom line. Thank you, Jim. Rick? Good morning, my name is Rick Wolf. Um, I've been a, visiting the uh, community since 1987, a resident since 2007. have a specialty in contract management for 44 years. I was the ad hoc president of a POA in Florida for three years. And I believe the community needs some fresh blood and we need to evolve, evolve to um, include everyone, even the younger people that are now moving into the community. Uh, I have uh, a unique talent of listening, I think, and speaking my mind, as everybody probably knows. But uh, with that all being said, that's my introduction. Thank you. Hi, my name is, Hi, my name is Jeff Paul. Um, my wife and I grew up in western Pennsylvania. Uh, in the summer of 73, we got married, moved to Wisconsin, where I finished up my degree in music education. We then moved to Northwest Iowa for three years where I was the band director. Then our big move east is we went back to Wisconsin and I taught the same school district there for 30 years. In that time when I was there, the last 15 years I was the golf coach and 10 years I did the um, hunter safety in the summer for the young kids. Um, I also was a officer in the Teachers Association a couple times, and I was on the golf board four different terms in my time there. And my wife and I both, uh, during the seasonal hours, worked at the golf course. Upon retiring in 2007, we moved into Fairfield Harbor. I was lucky enough to land a job at Havelock High School, and I did purchasing and front office support for the next 11 and a half years, which I retired from last March. We love the community, we're not going anywhere. We've been through a couple of hurricanes, this little mess that we're going through now, but this is our home. So I hope also, like these other gentlemen said, to give back to the community. Thank you. Hello, my name is Debbie Lutz. I live on Point Court here in Fairfield Harbor. My husband, Mary, and I have been here for about three and a half years. I am a small business owner. I've been in the travel business for over 50 years. Obviously, I enjoy that. Um, the reason why I want to uh, possibly be on your board is the fact that I think it's a great community. It's an affordable community. I want to see what I can do to help bring it back to its glory days and make it a nice place for all residents to concern. That's it. Er Hello, I would like to thank the POA board for making this virtual candidate tonight possible and thank you all for logging in. A lot of you know me as the person who raised the house at 1014 Pelican Drive near the old Shoreline Clubhouse. My wife and I have owned that house since 2004. We moved into Fairfield Harbor in 2013 and after Florence we got a chance to move back into it again last December. Fairfield Harbor is a great place to live and I'm very committed to making sure that it continues to be a great place to live. I'll briefly about my skills and how I spend my time. <laughs> I grew up in Rochester in upstate New York. I hold degrees in chemistry and worked in the chemical industry and the manufacturing sector. I still maintain membership in and have served on the board of directors of professional, of professional societies. I'm trained as a quality auditor and I have extensive experience in patents and work.
working with legal counsel. Allison owned a small business formulating and selling personal care products. Before coming to Fairfield, I was active with the National Arise Syndrome Foundation. Here in Fairfield, I find time to pursue some of my personal interests, which include music, model railroading, and stamp collecting. I serve on the board of directors of Craven Concerts, where I manage the musical instrument donation program. I also serve on the board of Temple Penang Shalom in New Newburn, volunteer at Public Radio East, do volunteer income tax preparation with Newburn and Vida, and I'm a member of the Fairfield Harvest Stormwater Committee. I'm running for the board because I'm concerned about thoughtful management and planning for the future. The areas I'm especially concerned about are one, maintaining control over and management of our community assets, two, emergency preparedness, and three, ensuring that Fairfield continues to be a great place to live, that we market it, and stuff. We have splendid resources and significant capital assets to manage. This includes facilities and equipment as well as land. We are utilizing them well to meet many current needs, but we must continue to plan for the future. We did a good job of gathering input from residents at the time we acquired land from Mid-South, but now a lot of new residents have come since then whose needs must be included. Demographics are changing and we have to meet the needs of younger working adults and children as well as retirees and aging seniors. Planning needs to be done in an appropriately transparent manner. This includes the way information is gathered, what the inputs are, the appropriate means for feedback, and how decisions are being made and will be made. I'd like to point out that I have no agenda to accomplish any one specific thing with our land, except to ensure that we do not sell off any of it, and that we use it for the enjoyment and the benefit of residents of Fairfield Harbor. We have generally good experience in handling individual medical and fire emergencies, but being unprepared for a disaster the magnitude of Hurricane Florence left behind problems of debris, slow recovery, and unscrupulous contractors. We all know that Florence will not be the last storm to blow through Fairfield Harbor. And the next disaster may not be a storm. Advanced planning and coordinated response will help us minimize damage and recover faster with less costs. Thirdly, after Florence, most of us have invested individually in rebuilding our home. A number of good community-minded builders have also invested in Fairfield. Even though reconstruction after the storm is not fully complete, Fairfield Harbor is looking better than ever. We need to continue to invest as a community in lifestyle resources. Lifestyle resources are becoming increasingly important to all ages. Good asset management planning will address this. And as we do so, we must, include, uh, we must continue to market Fairfield Harbor. As we clean up and modernize our facilities, Fairfield will appeal to the demographics that are attracted to the growing Newburn area. We should be marketing Fairfield Harbor as aggressively as ever. Thank you for listening. I'm ready to answer any questions that the community has posed. I want it to be clear that I am not on Facebook. If anyone has questions they would like to pose to me or would like to discuss any issues with me, you're welcome to call, text, or email me. Thank you again. Thank you all. We did well with that. We kept under time limitations. That's the goal. All right, I'm going to start off. Uh, these, are, these are being selected randomly. I'm trying to pare down. Um, and combine similar questions so we don't have to ask the same question over and over again. Here's a good one to start off with. <coughs> Candidates, what would you like to see the Shoreline Golf Course become? Park, etc. Jim, you're up. Uh, since the demographic, since the demographics are changing, I think should do something to accommodate the younger crowd. Since we now have school buses coming in here, which we never had in years past, there's a lot of younger children in here. And I see them on the road every day, riding bicycles, and, and that's kind of hazardous. I'd rather see them in an enclosed area that's safe, safe for the kids, and I'm sure the moms and dads would like to see them over there too. So I would like to see something uh, in the playground type of thing develop over there. Uh, and I would like to see it without a lot of increased revenue, a lot of increased expenditures. And I think we could do more with the clubhouse than we're doing now to earn that revenue. 
because I see a lot of waste going on over there, where I think we can bring in some extra bucks, then we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. Could you repeat the question, please? What would you like to, I already put it away. What would you like to see the Shoreline Golf Course become? Park or et cetera? I really don't have an opinion on that. I believe that's something up to the community and I believe we need to put out uh, some sort of surveys. And since we've, the demographics has changed drastically in the last three or four years here in the harbor and we've gotten a lot of new residents, I believe it would be uh, beneficial to the board to put some sort of survey out and try to develop a plan to uh, go from there. Thank you. One of the ideas that I put in on my resume or earlier information sheet was uh, maybe mapping out all our different streets on both sides and the old golf course and build a map showing walking trails, how far it is from here to there, um, around the whole community, which would utilize some of that. I see some. I walk the golf course probably three or four times a week. I like to mix up my routes. I don't know if it's feasible or cost efficient, but I think if we're going to do something like that over there, we need to get a bathroom back somewhere. Okay. Maybe where the old one was on Caratero that would facilitate uh, not only us and the community, but even some of the workers that are coming in. But I don't know cost-wise if that's efficient or not. Thank you. Um, I agree with a lot of the responses here. I do think that the shoreline or old golf course could become more of a green park area with walking trails, biking trails. Um, some park benches for people who are walking that might need to take a little break. Um, maybe some doggy stations because there are a lot of dogs and not everybody is good about cleaning up, but if they had a station that they could get the, um, uh, the products and to throw away, that would make it more easy. I came from a development up in northern or southern northern Virginia, Suffolk, Virginia, and we did that and it totally cleared up the situation. We do have younger kids and we do have people who are not voters and people who are not tennis players and people who, you know, the, the things are available to everyone. So we need to make it more appealing to everybody and clean it up. And I do think the clubhouse could be a great place to start, however it gets torn down or however, but built back up for a bigger place for all of the community to be involved in some of the activities that we have. Thank you, Deborah. Yes. Um, mainly, I would like to see that uh, land basically be used for recreational purposes. I, I agree with most of what was said already. We're going to need to basically get input from the community as to what you know, people really, really you know, would enjoy doing. You know, my wife and I walk along the paths all the time, bicycle along the paths. It's really nice they have green space. A lot of communities have green space and they enjoy it very much. We, but there's a lot of land. We, 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 we could do a few nice recreational things with it for, for all, all kinds of residents. I don't have any specific thing that I really want to do with it. I mean, we need to, need to find out what the community uh, wants. But I, I think it basically should be preserved for recreational activity. Okay, thank you. Next question, we'll start with Rick. As a candidate for the FHBOD, what do you believe is the single most urgent and important action that the board should address? Well, I think that's an easy question. The dues continue to go up with very little explanation to the community. I believe a simplified budget should be offered to the community that everybody can understand and maybe we calm down the fears of continued uh, rising of dues and expenditures that uh, that aren't really explained to the whole community. Jeff, you want me to read the question again? No, that's fine. Um, I have at this time. I have no strong opinion on that. I'm, I'm not a 
businessman, I've um, said we've enjoyed the community. I haven't felt slighted in any way. I, I like the way things have been going. I, I know that we've got problems and we got to tweak them, fix things that are wrong, you know. But if it's working, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. If I were to pick one item, it probably would be um, our security system. I think it needs to be more accountable. I think the front gate is, having talked to many people, it's 50-50, but I do think it needs to be more accountable and safer for all of us. Could you repeat the question, please? As a candidate for the FHBOD, what do you believe is the single most urgent and important action that the board should address? I think that, you know, from what I have observed, I think that cleanliness and safety is probably the most most important thing. Um, there are many aspects of that. Uh, I, I'm really not aware of, of a burning issue of any one nature, but I, I would think that, that uh, certainly safety is probably one of the most important things that we can, uh, that we can address. I agree with the, what most of the candidates said, but there's one other area I think we should address, and that is communication at all levels of age, because the young people are more savvy with the high tech stuff, such as this video that we're going to send down, and the older people, some of them don't even have computers. Um, we could figure out a way to get communicating to all the people so they know what's going on in the community. Uh, that would be a great asset. Thank you. Okay. Um, question for all candidates. If you are elected, will you support continued utilization of a professional management company? Uh, let's start with Jeff. Yes. <laughs> That's one of the cookies. Yes. Oh, there you go, Gabby. Yes. Could you just repeat the question? If you are elected, will you support continued utilization of a professional management company? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. But I believe we should have uh, a greater contract management oversight as the board. Maybe they do have it now, but I haven't seen it. And being part of that um, board of, that's what one of my goals would be, would be contract management oversight. And to provide that information to the community so they understand somebody is looking after our own benefit. Thank you. Um, do you understand the budget and P&L, property and loss, and how would you prioritize new expenditures you feel are necessary? I know that's a general question. Who, who goes first, or Debbie? Are you talking about the current P&L that we have, our budget that comes yes, out? Yes, the budget, I guess this means the budget process okay. in general. I do think it's complicated, and I don't think it's easy to understand, uh, having been involved in other POA uh, budgets, which are much more uh, easy to read, easier to read. Um, I think that we could calm it down a little bit, make it, dummy it down, however you want to say it, but you definitely have to be able to look at it. And I also would encourage the residents to look at it. Everybody complains, but they don't really even read the, the budget, they just complain. So read the budget, understand where the monies are going, and then ask your questions. Oh, yes, I, I agree that um, at, often as it's presented, the, uh, the budget looks complicated and not, not easy to understand at first glance. Uh, naturally, all the information is, is there, but um, I, I think that we should make sure that when it is presented, it is done in a clear, easy to understand manner. Uh, not everybody in the community is, in a, is an accountant, uh, and everybody needs to know what's going on. Jim. Uh, Jim. Yeah. 
Jim's up. Uh, it's kind of complicated. You, you kind of have to have an accounting background to figure out all that stuff that's going on. But if you want to put it in basic terms, try to run it like a household. You budget, you spend money, you don't have it, you don't spend it. And if you spend it and you don't have it, guess what happens? You get in trouble. Credit cards. And that causes a lot of problems in families. So that's the only way I can relate that to budget. That's one of my uh, platform issues also. Again, the budget on the POA website is very difficult, if not impossible to understand. I don't know who came up with that particular budget, but my government background seems to think that it's probably a government agency someplace that didn't want to tell you how you spent your money. So we need to provide a very simple explanation to the people and bring it to a budgeting accounting type of format that everybody can understand. In my background in music, I only had to count the 12. <laughs> that was the biggest time signature I had to worry about. So if we could simplify this down for us laymen, uh, I would appreciate it. And I, I would imagine most of the community would too. Thank you. This one's kind of a wide open question, but we've already talked about There are several questions on this subject, so I'm going to ask just this one. What are your viewpoints on incorporation of the community? Or you're up first. Incorporate. <clears throat> this, this is a, a very complicated issue. There are pluses and minuses for incorporation. Um, and I am certainly open to it. Um, and it can be beneficial in some ways. Uh, it, it would make a lot of changes in governance uh, in principle. Uh, but uh, it has to be looked into very carefully. We have to all understand exactly what the benefits and what the detractors are for doing it. Uh, and uh, I don't think, I certainly don't have all the information at hand to, to, to form, uh, you know, an opinion of a yes or a yes or no opinion at this point. Uh, and I think everybody's going to have to get that kind of, you know, that kind of information to understand the, the benefits and the detractors. Uh, of it, and we'll be able to make a decision. Um, yes, there are good points, and maybe there are some bad points uh, too. Uh, but we have to look into it carefully, and you know, be able to make a very thoughtful, careful decision if we ever consider it. I mostly agree with her. What he's saying, though. we have to be careful and weigh the pros and cons. And it's kind of like getting married. <laughs> I really don't have an opinion on it. I would like to see the pros and cons. I really didn't pay attention to that issue when apparently it was done a few years ago. I believe there was a study done, uh, so we would have to re-examine that study and uh, see, you know, since uh, Florence said, I believe there is some probably uh, some good reasons to incorporate. But I think there's a lot of, uh, from what I understand, that people have told me uh, there's a lot of negatives. So we'd have to very carefully consider that. My, my opinion, I, I, I don't really like to see that happen. I don't see the main positives. I see a lot more headaches going in that direction. But I'm willing to listen see, learn, if it is the best way for the community to go, I'd be willing to do that. But my gut feeling right now is no, I wouldn't like to see that happen. At this time, I don't really have an opinion on that. I would have to do a lot of researching and learning more about what goes into it. Um, I think there's more behind it than people really think. I think it's, they think it's easy, and I don't believe that's the fact. I would have to do more research. Thank you. Uh, there are also several questions in here having to do with safety on the roads and speeding. Um, 
I'll read this one. Will you seek ways to lower the speed of vehicles on our roads, such as Pelican Care Care Oil Pines, and such as increased enforcement? And do you support attempting to lower the speed limit to 25 miles per hour? You're up again, Jim. I agree with that. Uh, 25, 30 miles an hour is fine. And especially on a car, car straightaway, there's like a run, running strip. They have them at the, at the turn, but really where you need them is on the straightaways. Because that's where they pick up speed. There's a lot of kids down there. There's a lot of runners. They bring in a lot of kids. And uh, well, that's how I feel about that. Sure, this is a hot subject, or will be a hot subject out in the community. But uh, I have to agree that I believe 25 miles an hour is probably the, the best speed limit for our community. However, I disagree that the 35 miles an hour out on Broad Creek Road. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure why that happened, but uh, I've never been given a really uh, explanation, even though I asked the board about that once. So, 25 miles an hour in the community is what I would put on. That was one of my issues that I put in my opening statement on the peak. And um, if anybody knows us, um, I tend to spend a lot of time on my golf cart, weather permitting, and we're spending a lot of time on Pelican and Garrett Air and coming to the golf course. And in the past year, I've had about five close incidents on corners because people love to pass us without looking, even with a car coming. Where I've had to stop, squeal the brakes, or pull off, or you know, slow down so they can get in before they hit somebody. So I would be more than happy to bring that down to 25 and get some common sense in some of the drivers. I agree. Inside the gates, I think 25 miles an hour is good. I think maybe a few more posted signs would help. We do have a lot of walkers, bikers golf carts, which is one of the nice things about the community. So I think we do have to make it more people more aware of it and make them responsible if they are the ones that are speeding. Be it the residents get a license plate number for uh, somebody who's a repeat offender. We all have seen that in our area. So I do agree that we need the lowest. Yes, um, speeding uh, is a problem. I live on Pelican Drive, uh, I call it the Boulevard of Death. Uh, this morning I had to wait more than two minutes to back out of my driveway safely. Get down here. Um, yeah, people tend to have a tendency to speed. Um, 35 is probably a little too high. I don't know if 25 is a little bit or not, but certainly bring it down to 30. Um, but uh, yeah, there is a speeding problem, and, and, and people don't, don't follow the rules run through stop signs, speed on the, on the roads, um, and with very little regard to, uh, to other people in the community. Uh, I've had my mailbox backed down twice since I've owned the house. Um, cigarette butts lying along uh, the street in front of the house. Um, people don't, don't care. I think we, we need to do something to get people more community-minded uh, and, and particularly control the speeding. I, with, 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 uh, right, uh, I don't understand why 35 miles an hour on Broad Creek Road, but probably to keep it in tune with the, the speed limit and the rest of the community so people get used to it when they pull into the gates. But um, 35 is kind of it's, it's a little fast for, for, uh, for running down the streets, running through the streets of Carolina. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I got everybody right. Next question. Um, Rick, you go first on this. Do you have any understanding of the different DORs? How will you support the board in enforcing them? And do you, it's not very well written, sorry. Uh, do you have any understanding of the different DORs? How will you support the board in enforcing them? And do you understand the process of amending them? Sort of rewrote. There were three questions on the same subject, by the way. DORs is a sore subject out there right now. I understand. I live on the 
the, the, the point side, so uh, or the dark side as it's called, that we get to keep boats and trailers in the yards and, the, and in the uh, driveways. Uh, I don't currently have one, but if I did, I would. Uh, one of the reasons I moved to this community, because it is a boating and, and uh, camping and golfing and uh, sports-oriented community. I believe the DORs should be similar. Do I understand the process? Uh, not exactly. I understand, I got information just yesterday that the DORs were changed on the other side to eliminate the bolt boats and campers. So when somebody says it can't be done, I always say why not? I think that's up to the individual sections. There's 12 sections I believe here, and I believe each section has the right to vote on them. I'm not, perf I, I'm not totally clear on that. But if they do, then each section needs to get together and, and, and the board needs to provide that, that guidance and opportunity for them to, to, con, to uh, make their own decisions. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to add. I, what Rick's saying uh, makes sense. I, I know some of the things that happened with your, but I'm not. I'm not up on them, but um, I would like to see some of them gone, look into if they're not feasible, get rid of them, fix them, tweak them, um, and if it's you know good for the whole community, then we should fix that part of it. I'm not up on all of the DORs, and we have seven different sections of the community. Um, my concern is I don't understand why we're not all under one DOR. I know that takes a lot of legalities and a lot of work, but I think that's something that the board could look into to make everybody feel encompassed in one DOR rather than after you move in, you find out, oh, gee, I thought I could bring my boat, but no, I don't live on the right side of the community. So I think it should be one DOR. Irv, you're up. Could you repeat the exact question? I'm going to find it. Sorry, I put it away already. You kind of made it up out of three questions. Well, there, yeah, I did. If the, the general question was, do you understand the DORs? Are you aware of them? Um, and do you, will you support, how will you support the board in enforcing them? And do you understand the process of amending them? That's a multi-part question, I know. Yes. It's, uh, the DORs are very complicated in this community. First of all, I think that it's ridiculous that, although it happened by historical development, it's now the point where it's ridiculous that the, uh, the community as a whole doesn't have a uniform set of DORs. Uh, I don't know exactly what the process is for uh, changing them, although they can be changed. There is a process for doing it, and it can be done. Um, if we have to do it, certainly we'll all find out exactly what needs to be done to take care of it. Um, as far as enforcing DORs is concerned, if we have DORs, um, we generally need to enforce them in one way or another. Uh, in, some, in some cases, uh, in retrospect, old, some of the old DORs might be looked upon as being uh, arcane uh, or uh, uncomfortable in some cases, uh, but that's what courts are for. We have laws, we also have courts to make judgments about whether, how, how, how to enforce it. Um, there's a way to, to deal with every situation. And uh, you know, DORs, can, can, as well as laws, can be cookie cutter things, and not everything fits into a cookie cutter. And again, that's what our judicatory panel would have to deal with. Uh, but uh, these are all things that we have to look into as a community. Well, thanks. Yeah. Complicated the subject. Um, I think basically what we're looking for is trying to get everybody on the same page. And equality for all the individual owners, because it is their private property, and they would like to see it like other people's property. Okay, uh, several questions are on this same subject. 
Are you for or against building a new community center on the shoreline location? If, if for, when, and how to finance it? That's a complicated question. Well, I would love to see one, um, but I, the cost-wise, I, I don't know if we're up for that and how we're going to finance it. Um, it's going to be in the hundreds of thousands, um, and especially if you're talking about putting it up where the old clubhouse is. We'd have to take the old clubhouse down, demolish it, fix it, and start from scratch. So. Um, I would love to see it. I, I'd have to see the numbers and see if it's feasible. If it's feasible, I would be for it. I think it would be great to have the community get a nice pool back, maybe a rec center for exercising and um, maybe some bigger meeting rooms. But um, I would be. Sure. I would. I would like to look into it anyway. community centers, especially in that location, since it's such a beautiful location. I've heard all the stories about back in the day, how nice it was. I do think it would be a cost that we'd have to definitely see how it could happen, but it would be something that would be available to all residents, which is a nice event. This is kind of a hypothetical question because um, we really haven't said what we mean by a community center. Uh, you know, I, I'm certainly would be nice to see uh, another recreational area of some kind, uh, but you know, I, I can't I can't answer would I be in favor of a community center or not community center unless I knew exactly what people had in mind when they say community center. Uh, it depends, you know, what we think we need, uh, what we'd like to have, what we can afford, and where we can play. So uh, I think we just have to be a little bit more specific. He's uh, just asking, would you like a community center? I would definitely be in favor of a new community center. And I know it would cost more money, and that's where I would come in with marketing plans. And we've got a big money maker sitting over there at Fairfield Harbor Country Club, Harbor Point. I don't think we're using all the utilities and the facilities that we can. Uh, I would also look at boat fees, you know. Marinas, that's another way we raise money. Uh, contributions. Take it one step at a time. Yeah. I'm definitely in favor of doing something over there. I think one of the ways we have to look at it is right now we have, I believe, I was told that that uh, we have a $360,000 debt every year. And we have to pay that debt out of the, out of the revenue that we get from the golf course and the, and the, uh, the marinas. So I don't see us being able to generate enough money to do something like that unless we get some sort of partnership with someone. We have to take into consider consideration maybe we could get a gym to come in there and partner with us and help develop it. The other exist the other issue I guess would be the dues that that people pay or the fees they pay to go to the existing rec center down at uh, the old heart at the old harbor if everybody that goes there which seems to me like is the majority of the people that live here would be willing to pay those fees to go to ours until we could pay it off that's one thing because there's certainly I wouldn't certainly be in I would be not in favor of raising the dues and that's, that's the number one issue, and that's what every, I think everybody believes will happen. And I, I'm certainly not in favor of that. This is a rather long question. I'm gonna to try to do some editing here, but there's a couple of questions about security issues. What is each candidate's position on the security issue in the harbor? We're talking about the gates. Do we really need to spend literally hundreds of thousands of dollars on 24-7 gated security? There are other options, modified gates such as those in Brandywine Bay in Moorhead City with an annual security budget of less than $10,000.
what is your position on the current, uh, any current issues at the security gates, at the gates? Security is my number one platform. Um, I do understand that people like having the gated community, but if you think about it, we're not totally gated. So the manned gate, which 50-50 people like it, don't like it, if they're gonna be there, they need to be accountable. You can't have a party with 50 people and call the gate and tell them that you're having a party and they just open the gate. Every single person that comes through there, unless they have a code that a resident has given them, needs to be stopped, asked where they're going, and they write it down, or, I'm sorry, Mr. Smith didn't tell me you were coming, let me call him. That is why the mandate is there, so that would be my number one platform, but the majority of the people that I have spoken with do like the fact that we do have the security, so we need to just make them account. Sure. I'm kind of neutral on whether we need to have a gated community or not. Um, there's, uh, when I first considered moving to Fairfield Public, I, uh, I saw a, a, some a kind of a funny mentality about people who live in gated communities. I wasn't sure I wanted to live in a gated community, but it's a nice place to live. Um, and, uh, but uh, it, it, it's always nice it, it, when we would in, we used to have a security person wave to us and they're friendly being, being welcomed home every time you came into the door. Uh, but um, it, it, it's not doing a lot for us. They used to, used to uh, monitor, look after houses if you were you know, going to be away for a while and things like that. Uh, assist if you had a, some emergency situation sometimes. Um, uh, it, it, it can't happen anymore. It's not, it's not happening and it can't happen anymore. So you know, we really have to look into uh, what what's, uh, what the value of it is uh, for us at, the, at this at this time. Um, I've had a few issues myself with with um, inconveniences due to the way the people uh, at the gate operate. So it's either the matter of the company or what we expect them to do for us. I think we, it needs a little bit more thought. Can't answer it off the cuff. Jim, I agree with her. I, I don't know enough about it and whether we really need security or not. I think it's something we could look at, talk about, and maybe uh, query the neighborhood and the community and see what they think. Uh, I believe the gates are very useful. Um, you have to look at the crime right here. We virtually have no crime. If we open the gates or if there's nobody there, if that guy's not there, waving at people, at least that deters the crime in my opinion. I think there's alternatives. I lived in a totally gated community that had a fence all the way around in, in Florida, and we had no crime there. I believe that if we open those gates and we don't put anybody there, there's going to be a crime wave that hit Fairfield Harbor that these people will. I agree with what the gentlemen are saying. Uh, I don't know if it's changed since we moved here from 2007, but they're still like our first responders, right? They can't come into the house. They don't help if you have an issue. No. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> She's saying yes. You're saying no. It's not true. I, I think that's a plus because where we live, by the time an ambulance gets here, if you have somebody that at least has some background knowledge on helping out, that's a real plus, so. Plus I also like that security that they're there. I just guess I'd like to know what their do's and don'ts can, what they can enforce and what they cannot enforce. I had a walk in my house on, uh, uh, what was it, Super Bowl day. Because I, I had some people there. I didn't realize, I had one of our guests parked his car on the street on a train track, and they came walking in to tell us to move it. Which is okay, but you know, if they can do that, then they must be able to enforce some other things that are going on in the community. Mr. 
external again, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. There are also several questions um, on the subject of marketing Fairfield Harbor post lawsuits, post Florence, promoting the harbor, I guess. Um, what could we do better to market the community to the outside world, especially in the aftermath of Florence and the new flood maps? That was one of the questions about marketing, but there were a couple of them. So that's the general question. Do you feel that the, that the uh, board should market, public relations market the community, uh, and how, perhaps? Maybe that's a better way of rephrasing it, since these are all questions to the POA board candidates. Uh, yes, uh, I, I agree that the uh, that the POA board should uh, be involved in in, uh, in marketing. We should market. We should market Fairfield Harbor um, well and, and, and aggressively. Um, it's worth it. Uh, I'm not a marketing person. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> uh, but I, I I think that it's an important role for the board. I really do think that uh, that we should be marketing Fairfield Harbor. It's a, it's a great place. Uh, we've got a, a lot of uh, a lot of resources. Uh, we've, we've got nice amenities. The place looks great. It's pleasant to live in. Um, got a good school district that it goes to. Uh, there's every reason in the world that we should uh, we should continue to market it. I know that still sometimes there are funny attitudes in the New Bern community about Fairfield Harbor. Um, I think we need to make that go away. Uh, we, we recently sold a, a house uh, in Trent Woods, dealt with realtors and, uh, about that, and, and we had to educate them too about, about uh, the pluses of Fairfield Harbor. When they came to visit us, they say, hey, wow, what a, what a nice change in Fairfield Harbor since the last time we saw it. So yeah, I think there's, there's, there's work to be done uh, in, in terms of, of, of the reputation of Fairfield Harbor and marketing it, and I, I definitely think that the board has an active role to play in it. I don't fully understand the question. Uh, marketing, Fairfield Harbor. Don't we have real estate companies that do that? I mean, when somebody sells a house, isn't it marketed? I don't understand the question. I believe the marketing should be in the, in the management contracts that we have currently have. I haven't been able to see a copy of the management contracts. I understand there's numerous management management contracts here in the harbor, and that definitely should be included in the, in those contracts. Uh, we have a great golf course. Now we have a great restaurant. Nobody even knows we're here. Uh, I hear radio commercials all the time for colors and. Taberna and other places never hear anything for Fairfield Harbor don't understand why so if it's not in the management contracts it should be yep. and that's one of the ideas we put into in my original statement um, it's in Beacon I would like to see us work with the local realtors and really push this place at one time it must have been all up and down the East Coast I don't know how the heck you got all these people from New England down here in New York without that. Now, us Midwesterners, there's just a couple of us. We just happen to stumble upon, you know, upon this paradise. So, yeah, we have a lot of great things here going, and, it, and I think we can attract, and we need to attract, some more people into the community to keep it growing and going in the right direction. I agree. Um, I understand they did a lot of marketing back in when it first started uh, in the Maryland, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, starting out as a recreational place to come, have a second home, and then became their permanent homes. Um, if we have lots, buildable lots, that we can market, then I think that's a great idea. And I think you would have to go outside of the uh, current management company and hire a marketing company that would help us with that. Okay. 
this one's going to raise some hackles. As a board member, under what specific circumstances would you support an increase in the POA dues? You Jim, you're up. <laughs> Under what specific circumstances would you support an increase in annual POA dues? It would have to be something very, very important. Again, I think that comes back to the budget. We need to be able to read and understand the budget. I believe everybody in the community needs to get a, at least a summary copy. I'd like to see the beacon redistributed to everybody with all the notes in it. That's the simplest way we make sure we get everybody instead of this people with computers now. Uh, the other thing is, you know, we have to be honest. Uh, expenses go up every year. They're not going down. So some way we have to come up either making more money at the restaurant and golf courses to be able to pay the debt and absorb the increases in prices or we have to raise dues. Simple as that. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think, you know, you have to look at the total picture, look at the end of the year, see where we sit financially. I mean, if, if we don't have enough money to cover our expenses, we're going to have to cover them. So we can't just say we're not going to raise the dues, period. If that emergency arrives, I believe we're going to have to deal with that issue at that time. At this point, I would not be in favor of any POA dues in uh, raising right now. I think we need an explanation as to what the last couple years were for. I, obviously, Florence was one of them. But again, whatever our expenses are, we need to make sure that they're being spent on the right things that, that do accommodate the entire community. Okay, Jim, you're up. There are two types of circumstances under which people talk about raising dues. One is meeting general expenses, and the other is whether when there is uh, any uh, emergency or any existential circumstances. Um, you know, one, it's a matter, in terms of meeting expenses, it's a matter of deciding what you need to, what you, what you feel you need and want to do, versus what you don't, and what you're willing to pay and what you're not. You get what you pay for, no matter what the circumstances are. Uh, if there's an emergency, I mean, when you're talking about under what circumstances would you raise dues, suddenly you have to raise dues, uh, when you weren't, maybe when you weren't planning on, you know, the answer is if there's an emergency that we have to take care of that simply affects the life of Fairfield Park, okay. uh, then you figure out how you're going to, how you're going to take care of it. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, for the most part, the resources from, for raising dues are here. Nobody wants to. Nobody likes to pay dues. Uh, I mean, idiots don't like to pay dues. But uh, uh, I, I think, you know, it depends on what the circumstances are. The question of what circumstances, I would say certainly if there's an emergency. Okay. There are several questions on transparency of the board. One is asking, for a specific um, method of more transparency for the board. The other one wants three. So you can have as many as you want. So the basic question is, how would you improve the transparency of the board of directions, actions, and communications with the property owners? Go ahead, Rick. Uh, after every meeting, I would put a, simple, put a simple summary of what we did and why we did it. And if we have to communicate it electronically, that's fine. But again, I believe that to get, make sure everybody gets it, we need to find a way to distribute it to every brown box in the community, whether it's uh, a delivery service or volunteers to deliver that simple explanation of what the board did at every board meeting. I agree. I think uh, we could look into finding the people that do not have computers, do not have a smartphone, some way and maybe get them a paper paper issue for them. You know, maybe we can find that out. The people that can get it electronically or who are tech savvy, we can go the other way and we won't have to waste the money on paper. But for those that are not, we could go deliver those around. I mean I'd be willing to 
walk around the community and, and drop those in the black brown boxes. I agree. I think that everybody needs to be uh, have the opportunity to have the monthly uh, board meetings and minutes to be at their handle. And a lot of people here do not have the electronic versions. So again, that would be something the board would have to come up with about how we could do that further. Sure. I think in my for a statement, I defined something about what transparency means. Uh, and I, what I said was transparency includes the way information is gathered, the inputs, what they are, the appropriate means for feedback to the community, and how decisions are made and how the decisions will be made. Now, uh, how to, exactly how to communicate this, I'd say by any means that you know people are listening. Um, one of the things I think in terms of communication we probably should try to figure out if there's way, if we could establish a, a kind of an official means of communication that, that every resident and every owner needs to know is the official way of communicating information from, from the board to the residents uh, and feeding that from the residents to the board. Um, I don't know exactly what that or is or if, if there should just be one single way. But I definitely think it's an issue that we need to address. I agree with everything you said there. <laughs> Several questions also on improvement, improvements in Fairfield Harbor. Um, what improvements do you want to make? What are your first and second most important priorities for improvement in Fairfield Harbor? So if you see anything that you think needs to be improved, what are your first and or second, first and second most important priorities? You're up, Jeff. Uh, at this time, I don't see a lot of improvements on, I guess, Maybe some of the vacant homes. I, I don't know what our legal rights are, but there's been a home here that nobody's lived in since I got here. It just stands empty. I, I can't. I don't understand uh, the do's and don'ts. If I guess we can't do anything. I mean, you you can leave a car parked in your front yard, but you can't have a camper or a door in your front yard. You can't have that either. Um, but I see the biggest issue for. Um, making it a better place is to clean up some of these lots and to go after some of these people that are not taking care of their houses. But I don't know the, the laws of North Carolina and how that affects, you know, I don't know if it takes years to enforce it. Obviously, it must. Thanks. I agree. Probably my number one improvement at this point, and it shouldn't be a big money issue, is to clean up the lots, and a lot of those lots are owned by the POA. Some of them still look like they did the week after Florence happened. So clean those up, make those a little nicer looking so if you're driving down the street, it doesn't look like, gosh, a tornado just came through. But that would be my number one. I, I really would have, I would say number, number one is clean up. Uh, just simply making sure that, that when you drive through the community, it looks clean. I mean, there are places in the green space that need to be cleaned up, and I know they're working on it, absolutely, but I mean, as far as, as far as an important thing to do, yeah, I think just cleaning it up, making it look clean and neat and safe. Cleanliness also goes along with safety. Uh, and say, uh, yeah, that's probably, no, that's probably number one. And it, it does include the vacant lots and vacant houses. That's, that's probably number one. Um, I don't see a great need for anything uh, to be cleaned up. If there is uh, some, some people don't like the way lots look, I, I would have to examine the cost before we did it. I'd just like to say that uh, the lot cleanup is uh, paramount, but uh, Jennifer's here today and I'd like to give her credit. My, the lot beside my house was cleaned up and they made the, the homeowners do it. So there's, a, there's obviously some work being done on that. We just need to expedite it if we can. Otherwise, I, I don't like to see those empty homes. There's a, 
There's a cargo container sitting over on Barkentine Drive for two years. I don't understand that. I guess we have to look at those issues. But uh, I, in general, I believe that the neighborhood is beautiful. So that's why I live here. There are several other questions here, but they have to do with the vacant lots and the houses that have been um, abandoned, apparently, or they're not being used at all. And if anyone wants to add anything to the discussion we just had, otherwise, that's pretty much it on the questions. We blew through these pretty quickly. Let me just make sure I've got all the ones. Yep, we're all finished. That's the questions. Great job, everybody. Nice, good answers, quick. Um, now I'm going to turn the microphone back over to start with Jim. Uh, you have two minutes to do a quick wrap up. Um, let us know why we should vote for you. Why should you be our next board member? Okay, really, I liked everybody here. <laughs> I thought it was a great question and answer period. And, uh, I think I learned a lot just by sitting there. Well, I'd like to say to the community that I would be uh, honored to serve. Um, again, my, my points are um, contract management oversight, marketing, and I guess the, the thing that I learned the most here is that we need to have a, and do accounting and, and, uh, and communication. I've learned a, a word called KISS. And it, keep it simple, stupid, because if you don't, you're just going to mess everything up. And we need to go back to that. We need to, to get everybody on the same page. And I believe this could be a great community again. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. I'm, I'm running for the field with people. Hopefully to continue with all the great things that have happened over the last few years. I know we've had some hardships, but it's mostly, mostly positive. Um, I, I, I don't know. We, it's just a great place to live. I, I just would like to give back to the community some of it. It's given to me the last 13 years that I've lived here, and um, I, I don't know. I hope that this is where I'm going to stay until they drag me out in a box. So, thank you. I would just like to say I'd like to be on the board to help make the community great again. Um, as it was for the reasons that people came here in the first place, and I do want to um, work toward accountability and transparency for all of the residents in the community. Uh, very briefly, uh, yeah, I, I stated before I'm running for the board because I'm concerned about these, mainly these three areas, control and management of our community assets, community's benefit, uh, about emergency preparedness, and again, about ensuring that Fairfield Harbor continues to be a great place. I don't think we've lost anything. I think we're better than ever. Um, but uh, we've got to continue going in that direction. And uh, we shouldn't let any naysayers stop us. Thank you so much, candidates. You've done a great job. Uh, I just want to uh, thank Jennifer for doing this, our timer over here. Howard Advisor, a videographer, and my name is Pat Dumont, and I've been the moderator, and I've been happy to be here with the new candidates and getting to hear all of their um, platforms. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.